Ninja Tsa did release the wireless katana and they call it the katana super light. The name might be familiar for you guys and it actually looks quite a lot like the Logitech G Pro super light as well. The word katana had some issues that really bothered me but I'm happy to say that Ninja Tsa has listened to the feedback. Most of the issues have been fixed so let's go take a look if the Ninja Tsa katana super light is actually one of the best wireless mice available at the moment. For well, the quality and feel it's much improved over the wired katana, the coating at least feels more polished in my unit, it's smoother and more creepier than on the previous one. The click feel overall is more premium as it's very crispy and tactile and still kind of easy to actuate. There is a little bit of pre-travel and a little bit of post-travel but nothing that ruins the click feeling by any means. There is this one thing with the left click on my unit that hasn't happened in real use but when I actually use quite a bit of force and click it, it does creak. So this is the actuation, and when I use a little bit more force, it's hitting something or there is some creaking at least. It has not happened to me and it won't happen unless you play tracking heavy games and you really use a lot of force to press down your mouse one button. But also keep in mind that this might be only an issue on my unit. The side buttons then again have quite a bit of pre-travel and they feel a little bit mushy to me. They are alright for games but not really premium or high quality feeling by any means for general use. The scrolling experience is very crispy, it requires somewhat of a medium on the force and it's overall very pleasant to use when you're browsing or in-game. The scroll wheel click requires about medium amount of force as well so you can definitely use it in-game. The mouse feet are very good and they perform very well with all mouse pads that I have here. The experience is quite fast but there is still some control with faster surfaces like for example the LG G Venus here. The mouse feels very light at about 60 grams and it's very well balanced. It feels just as light or even lighter than the super light which is a very impressive feat. And considering the fact that they managed to keep the build quality very good because there is no flex, no creaking whatsoever, so it's a very impressive mouse in that regard. So in terms of premium feel, it does not really give you that premium kind of feeling you get with the super light or with a waxy or zawi mouse, but the coding is kind of nice and there are no structural issues with the build quality or anything like that, so it's not too far behind. In terms of in-game performance then, if we start with the clicks, these are very very well implemented. The latency is some of the lowest I've seen outside of end game gear razor and lodge there. But because the actuation requires a little bit more force than for example on the super light, these do not feel as responsive as the super light clicks do. But I wouldn't say it caused me any issues in game because the latency is so low. And the clicks are still easy to spam so that wouldn't cause you any issues in game either. The sensor performance is very good as it already was with the origin 1x from ninjutsu but this time around they are actually using the 3370 so they can achieve a lower lift of distance. The motion latency isn't as low as with the Razer Viper Ultimate at the super light and it's not quite as low as the X-Lite wireless either. But I'm getting a little inconsistent results with the mouse and in real use I do not feel any latency so I'm waiting for more results from Sogal and Tech Power Up. So overall in game the performance is very good and you should not feel any motion latency difference to the super light. The battery life is good as there is no RGB and the charging is done with this magnetic charging cable. The implementation is good but this means that I would need to have an extra cable on my desk all the time which I do not appreciate. So I personally would just prefer USB-C charging. So for performance sakes there are really no downsides with the Katana Super Light so what it does come down to is of course the shape. I've already talked about the shape in my Katana wired review so I will keep this quick and kind of tell you guys what I think it's very good for and who it's very good for also. I would not recommend this for small hands unless you really prefer larger mice. To me it's the most optimal with any kind of claw grip so whether you have a relaxed or an aggressive claw or any kind of hybrid in my opinion it will work very well. The main advantage of the shape in my opinion is the fact that you really do not need to have your fingers touch the mousepad at all if you don't want them to. But if you actually want to, you can also have your fingers more towards the bottom. And by this way your fingers will be touching the mousepad and you will have that additional friction if you want to. What I also find very good about this very rounded shape is that I can move my fingers mid-game without it actually causing any in-game performance issues for me. And it can actually help in some cases for example, so when I want to make a long range small adjustment that needs to be precise, I may want my fingers to be towards the front and my thumb to be right under the side buttons, but when I need some faster movement like a faster flick uh, close range, I might move my pinky and my ring finger more towards the back side of the mouse and this way I will feel more mobile and more ready for those fast close range flicks. Especially when the flick is more towards the right, 
I found that with some shapes, relaxed claw and right side flicks do not feel that comfortable for some reason. Adjustments like these are very easy to make because the mouse is thinner from the top than it is from the bottom, so the sides are angled like this. There are very small curvatures on the side, so they are not in the way when you're moving your fingers more towards the back or the front. As you possibly can see, the mouse is thinner from the middle as it is from the front and the back, so it does flare out some, but it's not drastic by any means. Overall, I do like the shape and I also like the fact that Ninjutsu are recreating some of these classic Microsoft mice. I don't necessarily think that this shape is so good anymore, but it can be very good for some of you guys who really do not want your fingers touching the mousepad while you game, or you want to be able to freely adjust your grip according to in-game situations, like for example, you want different kind of grip for tracking and different kind of grip for fix. If you recognize yourself in that, I think it's going to be a very good one for you guys. All in all, I'm positively surprised that there are no performance issues whatsoever However, with previous Ninjutsu mice, there has always been some, for example, Origin 1X and the Katana Wired had bad click latency. It's a niche shape from a small brand and I have absolutely no issue with that. Some people will for sure be enjoying and maining this mouse. But at this price point and even cheaper, there are all the glorious wireless mice and the x Lite wireless. The shapes are drastically different to the Katana though, so it will be a smart buy for some of you guys. Mainly to those people who claw or palm grip. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, if you enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button, and see you in the next one.